evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to our final performance of Troilus and Cressida. My name is Dan Schuster. I'm the director of tonight's show. Our show will begin here in just a minute, but before it does, I just have a couple of announcements. First of all, if you guys do want to move up, for those of you sitting back, you can. Obviously, our actors just have their voices. Um, we don't have any microphones, so the closer you sit, the better you hear. This is one of Shakespeare's more wordier plays, so I think the better you can hear it, the better you'll enjoy it. Um, we need to especially thank the DRC tonight and Mark Durfee for having us out here. They also gave us an alternate venue at the DRC where we could have performed if it had been rainy, so we greatly appreciate them. Um, if you haven't received a program, we do have a welcome table over there. Um, um, you can pick one up or see Cassie, our stage manager. Um, if you do visit the welcome table, and it will be available after the show as well, there is a donation box there. Uh, the Wichita Shakespeare Company is a 501c3 not-for-profit company, so we survive pretty much on the donations we receive from our audiences. So if you'd like to contribute, um, the box will be over there after the show, and any money you give us will go towards our future productions. Um, that said, we do have our next season picked out. Um, if any of you came to see Taming of the Shrew, which was our, our June show, we were handing out audience surveys to get an idea of what people wanted to see. Um, we're pleased to say that we picked the audience's number two and number three choice. The number one choice of the audience was The Merchant of Venice, which, believe it or not, is being performed at the Center for the Arts in Wichita next April. So obviously we're not going to do that one because it's being performed at the Center for the Arts. But we did choose the number two show, which will be our June show. That is The Tempest, and that's in June. And then in um, September, we'll be doing uh, Julius Caesar, uh, which will be uh, directed by Mark Anderson, who's acted with us up here in the park before. And he'll be doing it with an all-female cast. So it's the same story, same characters, just all-female cast of Julius Caesar. So uh, be sure to come back and see both of those shows, uh, Tempest in June and Julius Caesar in September. Uh, we don't have dates yet for those shows, but as soon as we do, we'll have them posted on our website, which is wichitashakespearecompany.org, and also on our Facebook site if you follow us on Facebook. Um, Tonight's show is Troilus and Cressida. It was written by Shakespeare kind of between the time of the great tragedies and the great comedies. And as such, it's really a mixture of styles, comedy and tragedy. A lot of people have called what called it a satire. And in, in terms of that, I mean, yes, it has comedy, it has tragedy, but it kind of takes the, the, the theme of the Trojan War, which everybody's familiar with, and it's um, kind of lampoons it. Shakespeare kind of lampoons it, kind of, instead of kind of defending kind of the heroic aspects of it, he kind of reveals more of the base, vile stuff that was at its core. Um, it's kind of Shakespeare's anti-war play, if you want to think of it that way. Um, but due to this, the fact that it's a satire and uh, kind of the base, vile core, um, the show is, we have rated a PG-13 due to some adult content and violence, uh, just to make you guys aware. Um, as uh, the character of Thersites, who you'll meet here in a minute, says, Lechery, lechery, still wars and lechery, nothing else holds fashion. And thus begins Troilus and Cressida. Enjoy. In Troy there lies the sea. From isles of Greece, the princes Orgulus, their high blood chafed, have to the port of Athens sent their ships brought with the ministers and instruments of cruel war. To Tenedos they come, sixty and nine from the Athenian Bay, set forth towards Phrygia, and their vow is made to ransack Troy, within whose strong immures the ravished Helen, Menelaus's queen, with wanton Paris sleeps. And that is the quarrel. Their deep drawing barks do there disgorge their warlike profit. And on the Darden plains, the fresh and yet unbruised Greeks pitch their brave pavilions. And expectation, tickling skittish spirits on one and other side, sets all on hazard. <laughs> And hither am I come, a prologue arm, to tell you, fair beholders, that our play leaps o'er the vaunts and firstlings of those broils, beginning in the middle, starting thence and away to what may be digested in a play. <laughs> like or find fault, do as your pleasures are. Now, 
good or bad, tis but the chance of war. Call here, my harlot. Call on arm again. Why should I war without the walls of Troy that find just cruel battle here within? Each Trojan that is master of his heart, let him to feel. Troilus, alas, hath none. <laughs> well, his gear ne'er be measured. The Greeks are strong and skillful to their strength, fierce to their skill, and to their fierceness valiant. But I am weaker than a woman's tear, tamer than sleep, fonder than ignorance, less valiant than the virgin in the night, and skillless as unpracticed infancy. <laughs> well, I have told you, enough of this. You know, for my part, I'll meddle or make no more in the matter. Now, he that will make a cake must first, uh, Carry the grinding. Have I not tarried? <laughs> I the grinding, but thou must tarry <coughs> the bolting. Have I not tarried? I the bolting, but thou must tarry the leavening. Still have I tarried. I <laughs> to the leavening, uh, and there's more to the heart, too. There's the kneading, the making of the cake, the eating of the oven, and the baking. <laughs> Aye, you must stay the cooling, too, or you may chance to burn your lips. Patience herself, what goddess e'er she be, doth lesser blench of sufferance than I do. At Priam's royal table do I sit, and when fair Cressid comes into my thoughts... Aye, she looked uh, fairer last night than I'd ever seen her look, or any woman else for that matter. Pandarus, when I do tell thee, Pandarus, there my hopes lie drowned. Reply not in how many fathoms deep they lie drenched. I tell thee, Pandarus, I am mad in Cressid's love. Thou answerest, she is fair. Horse in the open ulcer of my heart, her eyes, her hair, her cheek, her gait, her voice, handless in thy discourse. Oh, that her hand, in whose comparison all whites are ink, to whose soft seizure the signet's down is harsh. This thou tellest me, as true thou tellest me, when I say I love her. But saying thus, instead of oil and balm, thou pourest in every open wound that love hath given me the knife that made it. I speak no more than truth. Thou dost not speak so much. Faith, I'll not meddle in it. If she be fair, so be it. And if she be not, well, she's got the men's in her own hands. Pandarus. Oh, no, Pandarus. Uh, I have had labor for my travail. Ill thought on of her, and ill thought of, of you. Come between and between, and no small thanks for my labor. Art thou so angry, Pandarus? What with me? I'll meddle to make no more in the matter. Pandarus. No, not I. Sweet Pandarus. Speak no more to me, bravely. I'll leave it as it is, and there an end. Peace, you ungracious clamors, peace, rude sounds, fools on both sides. Helen must needs be fair when with your blood you daily paint her thus. I cannot fight upon this argument. It is too starved a subject for my sword. Oh, Pandarus, oh, gods, how you do plague me. I cannot come to crest about by Pandar, and he's as tetchy to be wooed to woo as she is stubborn chased against all suit. I tell thee, Apollo, for thy Daphne's love, what Crescent, what Pender, and what we. How now, Prince Troilus? Wherefore not a field? Because not there. What news, Aeneas, from the field today? That Paris is returned home and hurt. By whom, Aeneas? Troilus, by Menelaus. Let Paris bleed. Tis but a scar to scorn. Paris is gored with Menelaus's horn. Hark! What good sport is out of town today? Are you bound thither? With all swift haste! Uh, come, go we then together! <laughs> Who were those, went by? Uh, Queen Hecuba and Helen. Whither go they? Up to the eastern tower to see the battle. Hector, whose patience is as a virtue fixed today, was moved. He chide Andromache and struck his armor, and to the field goes he where every flower did as a prophet weep what it foresaw in Hector's wrath. What was his cause of anger? The noise goes this. There is among the Greeks a lord of Trojan blood. They call him Ajax. Good, and what of him? This man, lady, hath robbed many beasts of their particular additions. <laughs> he is as valiant as the lion, as as churlish as the bear, as slow as the elephant, a man into whom nature hath so clouded humors that his valor is crushed into folly, his folly sauced with discretion. He hath 
the joints of everything, but everything's so out of joint that he is a, a gaudy briaris, all, all arms and no use, or, or purblind argus, all eyes and no sight. How she just stand it, they smile, they text her angry. They say he yesterday cooked Hector in battle and struck him down. The stain and shame whereof have ever since kept Hector fasting and walking. Who comes here? What's that? Borrow Uncle Pandarus. Good borrow, Cousin Crescent. Uh, how do you? Uh, what are you talking of? Uh, good borrow, uh, Alexandra. Who were you uh, laughing at him? This morning. Oh, uh, and what were you talking of? Was uh, Hector uh, armed and gone ere you got to Ilium? Helen was not up, was she? Uh, Hector was gone, but Helen was not up. He was so. Hector was very That we were talking of. And of his anger. And he was angry. <laughs> so she says he is. Uh, sure. Uh, he was so. And I know the reason why, too. Oh, he'll lay about him today. I can tell them that. And Troilus will not be far behind him. Oh, they should take heed of Troilus. I can tell them that, too. Is he angry, too? Uh, Troilus? <laughs> no. He's a better man of the two. Why, you have no judgment. Like Helen herself said the other day that Troilus, well, I must confess, she praised his complexion above Paris. Then she's a merry Greek indeed. <laughs> hey, that she does so. Why, well, she uh, came to him the other day in the compass window. And you know, he had not three or four hairs on his chin, and she reached out and she stroked his cloven chin. Show him, have mercy, how came his clothing? <laughs> ah, you know his dimple. Is, uh, smiling becomes him better than any man in all Phrygia. Oh, he smiles valiantly. Uh, does he not? Yes. Uh, and for cloud in autumn. Well, go to then. Well, but to prove to you that Helen loved uh, Troilus. Troilus will stand to the proof, if you'll prove it so. Ha <laughs> oh, Troilus. <laughs> Why, he esteems her no more than I do an adult age. Why, I couldn't help but laugh when she reached out and tickled his uh, chin. Marvelous white hand on the knees of his head. And she pointed out, she spied that he had one white hair on his chin. Alas, poor chin, many awards is richer. Oh, everyone's so loud. And Queen Hecuba laughed so that her eyes ran over. And Cassandra laughed and Hector laughed. And what was all this laughing? And Mary, at the white hair that Helen spied on Troilus' chin. If that had been a green hair, I should have laughed too. Well, they laughed not so much at the hair as at his pretty answer. What was his answer? Well, uh, quoth she, you have uh, but two and fifty hairs on your chin, and one of them is white. This is a question. Uh, true, make no question of that. Uh, two and fifty hairs, quoth he, and one of them is white. And that white hair is my father, and all the rest are my sons. Well, Jupiter, quoth she, which one is Paris, my husband? Why, the forked one, quoth he, and he plucked it out and gave it to him. Oh, everybody did so loud, and Helen so blushed, and Paris so changed, but everyone so laughed that it passed. So let it now, for it has been a while going by. I told you something, cousin, yesterday. You think on it. So I did. I'll be sworn, it's true. <laughs> Hark, they're coming in from the field. Uh, come, let's uh, uh, sit up here where we can see them more clearly. See them as they pass in the Ilium. Uh, come, Cressida, my niece Cressida, do. Uh, at your pleasure. Here, here, and here would be an excellent place. Oh, yeah. Here we can see them most bravely. I will tell you their names as they pass by. And uh, Mark Troilus above the rest. Now, there's Aeneas. Now, there's a brave man, niece. Why, he's one of the flowers of Troy, I can, uh, I can tell you. But, uh... Mark Troilus. I will show you Troilus a nod. If he sees me, he'll nod at me. Uh, will he give you the nod? Mm, you shall see. Oh, that's Hector. That, that, look you, that. Oh, oh there's a fellow. Go thy way, Hector. Oh, brave Hector. Oh, look how he looks. I mean, there's a countenance. Oh, brave, brave Hector. He's not a brave man. A brave man. Is he not? Oh, it does a man's heart good. Uh, look at the hex 
Jack's on his, uh, in his leather there. Uh, looky yonder. Looky yonder. Oh, God, God's lit it does a man's heart good. Uh, yonder comes uh, Paris. Yonder, yonder. Looky yonder, niece. Uh, is not a gallant man, too? Oh, this is brave. Who said he was hurt? Well, he's not hurt. Well, if that will do Helen's heart good. I, uh, I will where Troilus is. Hark, do you hear the people cry Troilus? What sneaking fellow comes yonder? Uh, just Troilus! <laughs> no, there's a man, niece. Uh, uh, Troilus! Oh, Troilus! Prince of Chivalry! <laughs> Mark you, note him, look you well upon him, niece. See the blood on his sword? <laughs> He's got more hex on his brother than Hector. Oh, and how he looks, and how he goes. Oh, admirable youth. He's not yet three and twenty. Go thy way, Troilus, go thy way. Oh, admirable man. Here come more. Asses, fools, and dolts. Chaff and bran, chaff and bran, porridge after me. Why, I would rather live and die in the eyes of Troilus. Why, I would rather be such a man as Troilus than Agamemnon or any Greek. There is among the Greeks Achilles, a better man than Troilus. Achilles. He's a gray man, a porter, a, a, a very camel. Well, well. Well, well. So have you no indiscretion? Have you no eyes? Do you not know what a man is? Is not a man birth, beauty, good shape, discourse, manliness, learning, gratitude, virtue, use, liberality, and so such like? Is not that the spice and salt that seasons a man? Why, you are such a woman, I know not what words I laugh. Upon my back, to defend my belly. Upon my wit, to defend my wiles, my secrecy to defend my honesty, my mask to defend my beauty, and on you to defend all these. And in all these wards I lie, at a thousand watches. Oh. <laughs> Very well, niece. Adieu, uncle. Well, I will see you, niece. Bye, bye. To bring, uncle. Bye. And who can control us? By the same token, you are a bond. <laughs> Words, vows, gifts, tears, and love's full sacrifice he offers in another's enterprise. But more in Troilus thousandfold I see than in the glass of candor's praise may be. Yet hold I off. Women are angels wooing. Things won or done, joy so lies in the doing. But she, beloved, knows not that knows not this. Men prize the thing ungained more than it is. But she was never yet that ever knew love got so sweet as when desire did sue. Therefore, this maxim out of law I teach, achievement is command, ungained beseech. And though my heart's content, firm love doth bear, nothing of that shall for mine eyes appear. <laughs> Princes, what grief has set the jaundice on your cheeks? Is it matter new to us that we come short of our suppose so far that after seven years' siege yet Troy walls stand? Agamemnon, thou great commander. Nerve and bone of Greece, part of our numbers, soul and only spirit, hear what Ulysses speaks. Speak, Prince of Ithaca. Troy, yet upon his bases, has been down, and the great Hector's sword has lacked the master but for these instances. The specialty of rule hath been neglected, and look, how many Grecian tents do stand hollow upon this plain? So many hollow factions. The heavens themselves, the planets and this center, observe degree, priority, and place. Of course, 
proportion, form, office and custom, and all line of order. But when the planets in evil mixture to disorder wander, what plagues and what portents, what mutiny, what raging of the sea, shaking of earth, commotion and winds, frights, horrors divert and crack, rend and derosinate the unity and married calm of states quite from their fixture. Oh, when degree is shaped, then enterprise is sick. How could communities, degrees in school, brotherhoods in cities, peaceful commerce from dividable shores, prerogative of age, crowns, scepters, laurels, but by degree stand in authentic place. Take but degree away, untune that string and hark what discord follows. Great Agamemnon, this chaos, when degree is suffocate, follows the choking. The generals disdain by him one step below, he by the next, the next by him beneath. So every step exampled by the first pace of his superior, that is sick, grows to an envious fever, and tis this fever that keeps Troy on foot, not her own sinews. To end a tale of length, the Trojan hour weakness stands not in her strength. Oh, most. Wisely hath Ulysses here discovered the fever whereof all our power is sick. The nature of the sickness found, Ulysses. What is the remedy? The great Achilles, whom opinion crowns as the sinew and forehand of our host, having his ear full of his airy fame, has grown dainty of his work. And in his tent lay mocking our designs, and with him Patroclus, whom upon a lazy bed the live long day breaks skirl chest, and with ridiculous and awkward action pageants us. Sometime, great Agamemnon, thy topless deputation he doth put on, and like a strutting player he acts thy greatness in. <laughs> At this fusty stuff, the large Achilles on his pressed bed lying, and from his deep chest lasts out loud applause, cries, Excellent! Tis Agamemnon just now, play me Nestor, as being dressed to some oration. This is done as near extremist ends of parallels, yet God Achilles still cries, Excellent! Oh, enough, Patroclus, or give me ribs of steel, or I will split in all the pleasures of my spleen. <laughs> And in this fashion, all of our actions, shapes, natures, success or loss, what is or is not, serve as such, such stuff for these two to make paradoxes. And in the imitation of these twain, who, as Ulysses says, opinion crowns with an imperial voice, many are in fact. Ajax has grown self-willed and bears his head in such a rain and full as proud of place as Achilles. Keeps his tent like him. Rails on our state of war, bold as an oracle. What trumpet? Look, Diomed! From Troy. What would you for our tent? Is this the great Agamemnon's tent, I pray you? <laughs> Even this? <laughs> uh, nay, one that is a herald and a prince do a fair message to his kingly ears. With surety stronger than Achilles' arm, for all the Greekish hands, which with one voice call Agamemnon, head in general. Fairly, then, large security. How may one, that is a stranger to his most imperial looks, know them from the eyes of other mortals? How? Aye, <laughs> but she's the god in office guiding men, and which is the... High and mighty Agamemnon! <laughs> the Trojan scorns us! All the men of Troy are ceremonious courtiers. Sir, you of Troy, call yourself Aeneas. I agree. That is my name. 
What's your affair, I pray you? <laughs> Pardon, sir? Tis for Agamemnon's ears. He hears not privately. That comes from Troy. I know I from Troy come not to whisper him. Speak frankly as the wind. It is not Agamemnon's sleeping hour that thou shalt know. Trojan, he is awake. He tells thee so himself. We have a great Agamemnon. I hear in Troy a prince called Hector. A Priam is his father, who in this dull and long-continued truce is rusty grown. He bade me to this purpose speak. Kings, princes, lords, if there be one among the fairest of the Greeks who holds his honor higher than his ease, who seeks his praise more than fears his peril, who knows his valor and knows not his fears, who loves his mistress more than in confession, and dares a vow to her beauty and her worth in arms other than hers, to him this challenge. Hector hath a lady, wiser, fairer, purer than any Grecian that ever compass in his arms. And he will tomorrow, with his trumpet call, midway between your tents and the walls of Troy, arouse a Grecian that is true in love. If any come, he will honor him. If none, <laughs> he will say in Troy when he retires, the Grecian dames are sunburnt and not worth the splinter of a lance. Even so much. This shall be told our lovers, Lord Aeneas. But we are soldiers, and may that soldier a mere requiem prove that means not, hath not, or is not in love, if then one is, hath, or means to be. That one means Hector, if none else, I am he. <laughs> now may God forbid the scarcity of youth. Amen. <laughs> Fair Lord Aeneas, let me touch your hand. To our pavilion shall I lead you, sir. Achilles shall have word of this intent. So shall each lord of Greece from tent to tent. Yourself shall feast with us before you go and know the welcome of a noble foe. Nestor! What says Ulysses? <clears throat> I have a young conception in my mind. Be you my time to give it some shape. What is it? This challenge the gallant Hector sends, however it is spread in general name, applies in purpose only to Achilles. Why, tis most mean, sir. For whom else may you oppose that can from Hector bring his honor off, if not Achilles? Give pardon to my speech. What glory our Achilles share with Hector, were he not proud, we all should share with him, but he already is too insolent. No, make a lottery, and by design let blockish Ajax draw the sort of fight with Hector. Among ourselves, give him allowance for the better man, for this will physic the great Achilles, who broils in loud applause, and make him drop his crest that prouder than blue Irish pins. <laughs> If the dull, brainless Ajax come out safe, we will dress him in voices. If he fail, yet go among our opinion that we have better men. But hit or miss, Ajax employed, plucks down Achilles' plumes. <laughs> oh Agamemnon, how have you had boils full all over, generally? Sighting. And those boils did run, say so? Uh, would not the general run too? <laughs> then, well, we're not that a bunchy corn. Dog. Then would come some matter from him. I see none now. Counts do not hear. Feel that. Ow! Ah, the plague of grace upon thee, that mongrel beast-witted lord. Toadstool, learn me the proclamation. Does that mean I have no, no wind? No strikes me thus? The proclamation. Oh, thou art proclaimed a fool, I think. 
not Vermintide, do not spill my fingers itch. Oh, I would felt its itch from head to foot, and I had the scratching of thee. I would make thee the loathsome of a scab and all of grease. I say, the proclamation. <sighs> Thou grumblest and railest every hour on Achilles. Thou art as full of envy at his greatness as Cerberus is to Persephone's beauty. Come over. Oh, I do, do. Thou stool for a witch. Do, do, thou sun-witted lord. Thou hast no more brains than I have in my elbow. You dog. Scurvy lord. You cur. Mars is an idiot. Oh, do, Rubus. Do, camel, go, go. How ah. now, Ajax? Swiffle do you thus? How now, Thessites? What's the matter, wench? Do you see him there, do you? Why, what's the matter? Hey, but look upon him. Uh, I do so. What's the matter? Hey, but look well upon him. Uh, well, I do so. Yet you do not look well upon him, for whosoever you take him to be, he is Ajax. I know that fool. Aye, but the fool knows not himself. Therefore I beat thee. Oh, no, 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 no. What modicums of wit he utters. This... Lord Achilles, this Ajax who wears his wits in his belly and his guts in his head, I'll tell you what I say of him. What? I tell you, this this Ajax... Nay, gentle Ajax. ...has not so much wit... Nay, then I must hold you... ...as when... Stop the eye of Helen's needle for whom he comes to fight. Peace, fool! I would have peace and quietness, but the fool will not. He there, that he, look at him. Oh, damn cur, I shall... Nay, then. What is the quarrel? I bade the vile owl learn upon me the tenor of the proclamation, and she rails upon me. I serve thee not. Well, go to, go to. I serve here voluntary. Your last service was sufferance, not voluntary. No one is beaten voluntary. Here, Ajax was the voluntary, and you as under an impress. So, a great deal of your wit, too, lies in your sinews, else there'll be lying. <laughs> what? With me, too, for sight. Ah, to Achilles, to Ajax! I shall cut out your tongue! Oh, it matters not. I shall talk as much as you afterwards. No more words, for peace. Oh, oh, I shall hold my peace when Achilles' bitch bids me, shall I? <laughs> so there's for you, Patrick. Oh, so see you all hanged like clot poles ere I come to your tents again. I shall keep where there's some wit stirring and leave this faction of fools. Good riddance. Mary, sir, this is proclaimed through all our hosts that by the fifth hour of the sun, Hector will with trumpet twixt our tents and Troy tomorrow morning call some knights to arms that hath a stomach and he the one that dares maintain. <coughs> I know not what is trash. Farewell. Farewell. Who shall answer? <coughs> I know not is put to lottery. Otherwise he knew his man. Oh, meaning you. I will go learn more of it. After so many hours, lives, speeches spent. Thus once again says Nestor from the Greeks, deliver Helen and all damage else. As honor, loss of time, travail, expense, wounds, friends, what else, dear, is consumed in hot digestion of this command wall. Shall be struck off. Hector, what say you to it? Let Helen go. Since the first sword was drawn about this question, every to soul, amongst many thousand dime, hath been as dear as Helen. I mean of ours, if we have lost so many tenths of ours, to guard a thing not ours, nor worth to us had it our name the value of one tenth, but merit in the reason which denies the yielding of her up. <laughs> fie, fie, my brother, fie for godly shame. Rather, she is not worth what she doth cost the keeping. What is aught but as tis value? But value dwells not in particular will. It holds his estimate and dignity as well, wherein tis precious of itself as in the prizer. Tis mad idolatry to make the service greater than the god. If you'll about twas wisdom, Paris went, as you must needs, for you all cried, go, go. If you'll confess he brought home noble prize, as you must needs, for you all clapped your hands and cried inestimable. 
Why do you now beggar the estimation which you prize richer than sea and land? O oh, theft most base, that we have stolen what we do fear to keep. Cry, Trojans, cry! What shriek is this? Tis our mad sister. <laughs> cry, Trojans, cry! Lend me ten thousand eyes, and I will fill them with prophetic tears. Peace, sister, peace. Virgins and boys, mid-aged and wrinkled elves, Soft infancy that nothing canst but cry. Add to my clamors! Let us pay the times a mighty of that mass of a moan to come. Cry, Trojans, cry. Troy must not be, nor, nor goodly Ilium stand. Our firebrand brother Paris burns us all. Cry, Trojans, cry. A Helen and a woe. Troilus, do not these high strains of divination in our sister work some touches of remorse? Or is your blood so madly hot that no discourse of reason, nor fear of bad success and a bad cause can qualify the same? My brother Hector, we may not think the justice of each act such, that no other than event doth form it, nor once deject the courage of our minds because Cassandra's mad. Her brain sick raptures cannot distaste the goodness of a coral which hath all our several honors all engaged to make it gracious. For my private part, I am no more touched than all Priam's sons. And Joe forbid there should be done amongst us such things as might have been the weakest spleen to fight for and maintain. Else might the world convince of levity as well my undertakings as your counsels. But I attest the gods, your full consent gave wings to my propension and cut off all fears attending on so dire a project. For what, alas, can these, my single arms? What propagation is in one man's valor to stand the push and enmity of those this quarrel would incite? Yet I protest, were I alone to pass the difficulties and had as ample power as I had will, Paris should ne'er retract what he hath done, nor faint in the pursuit. Paris, you speak like one besotted on your sweet delights. You have the honey still, yet these the gall. So to be valiant is no praise at all. Sir, I propose not merely to myself the pleasures such a beauty brings with it, but I would have the soil of her fair rape wiped off in honorable keeping her. What treason were it to the ransacked queen, disgrace to your great words, and shame to me, now to deliver her possession up on terms of base compulsion? Can it be that so degenerate a strain as this should once set footing in your generous bosoms? There is not the meanest heart on our party without a heart to dare or sword to draw when Helen is defended nor none so noble, whose life were ill-disposed, or death unfeigned, where Helen is the subject. Then I say, well may we fight for her, whom we know well the world's large spaces cannot parallel. Paris and Troilus, you have both said well, and on the cause in question now in hand have lost but superficially, not much, unlike young men. The reasons you allege do more conduce to hot passion of distempered blood than to make a free determination twixt right and wrong. Pleasure and revenge have ears more deaf than adders to the voice of any true decision. Nature craves all dues be rendered to their owners. Now what near death in all humanity than wife is to the husband? Now, if these moral laws of nations end of nature. Speak aloud, have a back return. And, and to persist in doing wrong extenuates not wrong, but makes it much more heavy. Hector's opinion is this, and way of truth. <coughs> Yet, nevertheless, my sprightly brethren, I propend to you in resolution 
to keep Helen still. For tis a cause that hath no mean dependence on our joint and several dignities. Why, there you touch the life of our design. Were it not glory that we more affected than the performance of our heaving spleens, I would not wish a drop of Trojan blood spent more in her defense. But worthy Hector, she's a theme of honor and renown, a spur to valiant and magnanimous deeds whose present courage may beat down our foes and fame in time to come canonize us. For I presume brave Hector would not lose so rich advantage as smiles upon the forehead of this action for the wide world's revenue. Ah, <laughs> uh, I am yours, you valiant offspring of great Priam. I have a roisting challenge sent amongst the dawn and factious nobles of the Greeks that will strike amazement in their drowsy spirits. I was advertised their great general slept while emulation in the army crept. This, I presume, will wake him. Thersites, what? Lost in the labyrinth of thy fury? Shall the elephant Ajax carry it thus? He beats me whilst I rail at him. Worthy satisfaction. Would that it were otherwise, that I could beat him whilst he railed at me. <laughs> Foot, elder to conjure and raise devils, but I'll see some issue from my spiteful execrations. And then there's Achilles, a rare engineer. If Troy be not taken till these two undermine it, the walls will stand until they fall of themselves. Thyself upon thyself. The common curse of mankind, folly and ignorance, be thine in great revenue. Oh, heaven, bless thee from a tutor and, and discipline come not near thee. May thy blood be thy direction until thy death, and if she that lays you out says thou art a fair course, I'll be sworn and sworn upon it. She never shrouded any but lepers. Amen! Who's there? The Thersites, my lord. Why, my cheese, my digestion, wherefore have you not served yourself unto my table this many meals? Come, what is Agamemnon? Thy commander, Achilles. Then tell me, Patroclus, what is Achilles? Thy lord, Thersites, then tell me, I pray you, what's thyself? Thy knower, Patroclus. Then tell me, Patroclus, what art thou? Thou mayest say that knowest. <laughs> tell, tell. <laughs> I decline the whole question. Agamemnon is Achilles' commander. Uh, Achilles is my lord. I am Patroclus' knower. And Patroclus is a fool. <laughs> you rascal. Ah, uh, peace, fool, I have not done. She's a woman of privilege. Proceed, Poseidon. Agamemnon is a fool. Achilles is a fool. Poseidon is a fool. And as aforesaid, Patroclus is a fool. Derive this, come. Ag Agamemnon is a fool to offer to command Achilles. Achilles is a fool to be commanded by Agamemnon. Thersites is a fool to serve such a fool, and Patroclus is a fool positive. Why am I a fool? Uh, make that demand of the prover. It, it, it suffices me thou art. 
soft. Who comes here? Patroclus will speak to nobody. Come in, Thersides. Such patchery, such knavery, such juggling. All the world's a cuckold and a whore. A good quarrel to, to draw up emulous factions and bleed to death upon her. The dry serpent go on the subject, and war and lettery confound all. Where is Achilles? Within his tent, but ill disposed, my lord. Let it be known to him that we are here. He sent our messengers, and we lay by our appetitments visiting of him. Let it be told so. Lest perchance he think we dare not move the question of our place, or know not what we are. I shall say so to him. <laughs> I saw him at the entrance <coughs> of his tent. He is not sick. Yes, lion sick. Sick of proud hearts. You will call it melancholy if you may favor the man, but by my head, tis pride. What Ajax does bear him? Achilles hath unveiled his fool from him. Who, Thersites? She. Uh, all the better. Their fraction is more our wish than their faction. Here comes Patroclus. Achilles bids me say, he is much sorry if anything more than your sport and pleasure did move your greatness and this noble state to call upon him. He hopes it is no other but for your health and your digestion's sake and after dinner's breath. Hear you, Patroclus. We are too well acquainted with these answers, but his evasion with the swift with scorn, cannot outfly our apprehensions. Much attribute he hath, and much the reason why we ascribe it to him. Yet all his virtues, not virtuously on his own part beheld, do in our eyes begin to lose their gloss. Go and tell him, we'll come to speak with him, and you shall not sin if you do say, we think him over proud and under honest. I shall, and bring his answer presently. Will not be satisfied at second voice. We come to speak with him. Ulysses, enter you. What is he more than another? <laughs> no more than what he thinks he is. Is he so much? Do you not think he thinks himself a better man than I? <laughs> no question. Will you subscribe his thought and say he is? No, noble Ajax. You are strong, as wise, as valiant. No less noble, much more gentle, and altogether more tractable. <laughs> Why should a man be proud? How does pride grow? I know not what pride is. Your mind is the clearer, Ajax, and your virtues the fairer. Why, he that is proud eats up himself. I do hate a proud man, as I hate the engendering of toads. Yet he loves himself. Is it not strange? <laughs> Achilles will not to the field tomorrow. What's his excuse? He doth rely on none, but carries on the stream of his dispose without observance or respect of any, in will peculiar and in self-admission. Why will he not, upon our fair request, untint his person and share the air with us? Let Ajax go to him. Yes, dear lord, go you and greet him in his tent. To said he holds you well, and will be led at your request a little from himself. Oh, Agamemnon, let it not be so. We will consecrate the steps that Ajax makes when they go from Achilles. Shall the proud lord, who faced his arrogance in his own seam and never suffers matter of the world, enter his thoughts, say, but to revolve and ruminate himself, <laughs> Shall he be worshipped more than what we hold an idol more than him? No! This thrice worthy and right valiant lord shall not so stale his palm, nor by my will subjugate his merit by going to Achilles. This lord go to him? Jupiter forbid! And say in thunder, Achilles, go to him! This is well, he rubs the vein of him. And how his silence drinks up this applause. <laughs> if I should go to him, with my armed fist, I'll bash him on the face. <laughs> oh, no, you shall not go. Be proud of me. I'll feed his pride. Let me go with him. Not for the worth that hangs upon our court. Oh, my insolent fellow. How he describes himself. Can he not be sociable? <laughs> I'll let us hear it. 
He will be the physician that should be the patient. Oh, <laughs> man, for my mind. Wit would be out of fashion. <laughs> first, I would eat swords first. I will need him. I will make him some. He's not yet through warm. Force him with praises. Pour in, pour in. My lord, you feed too much on this dislike. Our noble general, do not do so. You must prepare to fight without the kill. Why, it's just the naming of him that does him harm. Here is a man. It is upon his face. I shall be silent. But wherefore should you so? He is not amulet of the kingdom. Know the world he is as valued. No horse and dog that should pelter thus with us. Would he were a Trojan? What a vice were in Ajax now? Were he proud? Or covetous of praise? Aye, or surely born? Or strange, or self-affected? Thank the heavens, Lord, thou art of sweet composure. Praise <laughs> he that got thee. She that gave thee suck, but he that disciplined thine arms to fight. Let Mars divide Jupiter, let Mars divide eternity in twain and give him half. And for thy vigor, bull bearing Milo, his side, yielded to sinewy Ajax. Here is Nestor, instructed <laughs> in the antiquary times. He must, he is, he cannot be, but wise, but pardon, Father, Nestor, were your years as green as Ajax, and your mind as tempered, you shall not the imminence of him, but be as Ajax. Shall I call you Father? Aye, my good son. Be ruled by him, Lord Ajax. There is no tarrying here. The heart, Achilles, keeps thicket. Please it our great general to call all his states to war. Fresh kings come from Troy tomorrow. And we must with all our made of power stand fast. And here is the Lord. Come knights from east to west and call their flowers. Ajax shall cope the best. Let thy song be love. This love will undo us all. Oh, 
Cupid, Cupid, Cupid. Love, let it show a face. Aye, good now. Love, love, nothing but love. Oh. A good trust. It begins so. <laughs> love, love, nothing but love. Still more for all. Love, more. She's but and no shall confound, nor does it well. The tickle still the <laughs> The lovers cry. Oh, oh, oh they die. But still it seeks a woe to hell. Doth And I love lives generation of vipers? Uh, sweet lord. Who's, uh, who's in the field today? The Hector, Aeneas, and all the gallantry of Troy. I would fain have armed today, but my nail would not have it so. <coughs> How chance that my brother Troilus went not? He hangs the lip at something. You know all, Lord Pandarus. <laughs> not I, honey, sweet queen. Huh? Well, I long to hear how he set the day. Uh, you will remember your brother's excuse. To a hair? <laughs> Very well, uh, sweet queen. Commend me to your niece. <laughs> <laughs> I will, sweet queen. <laughs> They've come from field. Let us to Priam's hall to greet the warriors. Sweet Helen, I must woo you to help unarm our Hector. His stubborn buckles with these your white enchanting fingers touched shall more obey than to the edge of steel or force of Greekish sinews. You shall do more than all the island kings. Disarm, great Hector. Will make us proud to be his servant, Paris. Sweet, above thought, I love thee. How now? How now? Have you uh, seen my cousin Crescent? No, Pandarus. I stuck about her door like a strange soul upon the Stygian bank staying for waftage. A weed on my caron, and give me swift transportance to those fields where I may wallow in the lily beds proposed for the server. From Cupid's shoulder, pluck his painted wings and fly with me to Crescent. Pluck in the orchard. I'll fetch his train. I'm giddy. Expectation whirls me round. The imaginary relish is so sweet that it enchants my sense. What will it be when that the watery Pelotis indeed loves thrice for pure nectar? Death, I fear me. Swooning destruction or some joy too fine, too subtle potent, too, too sharp in sweetness for the capacity of my ruder powers. Oh, she's making her ready. <laughs> She'll come along, Scrape. <laughs> now, you must be witty. Well, she does so blush. <laughs> and and her, her voice is it's fits like a, it's been frisked by a sprite. <laughs> Fetches her voice like a new taken sparrow. Even such a passion doth embrace my bosom. My heart beats thicker than a feverous pulse, and, and all my powers do their bestowing loose like like vassalage and unawares encountering the eye of majesty. <laughs> oh, come, come. What needs you blush? Shame's a baby. 
Here she is now. Swear to her the oath that you have sworn to me. Why do you not speak to her? Hey, come. Uh, lift the curtain and show your picture. No, look in the daylight. So? So? Rub on and kiss the mistress. <laughs> you have bereft me of all words, lady. Words pay no debts, give her deeds. And if she bereaves you of the deeds, well, <laughs> Come in, come in, I'm going to get a fire. Allow us as we prove. Our, our head shall go bare till merit crown. Still blushing? Haven't you finished talking? Uncle, what folly I commit, I dedicate to you. And I thank you for it. And if my lord should get you a boy, well, uh, give him to me. Now, thou must be true to my uh, lord. If he, uh, if he flinches, chide me for it. You now know your hostages, your uncle's word and my firm faith. Yeah, I'll get more than my word. Our kindred, but they be long ere uh, ere wound. Once they are one, they are constant. They are like birds; they will stick to their throat. <coughs> Coldness comes to me now, and brings me heart. Prince Troilus, I have loved you night and day for many weary months. Why then was my crescent so hard to win? Oh, hard to seem one, but I was one, my lord, with the first glance that ever. If I confess much, you will play the tyrant. I love you now, but till now not so much, but I might master it. Oh, in faith I lie. My thoughts were like unbridled children grown too headstrong for their mother. See, behold, <coughs> why have I blabbed? Who shall be true to us when we are so unsecret to ourselves? Oh, I loved you well, I wooed you not. And yet, good faith, I... I wished myself a man, or that we women had men's privilege of speaking first. Speak with me with your <coughs> tongue, for in this rapture I shall surely seek to think I shall repent. See, see, your silence, cunning and dumbness, for my weakness draws my very soul of counsel, stops my mouth. And shall, albeit sweet music issues then. Pretty of faith. And Lord, I do beseech you pardon me. T'was not my purpose thus to make a kiss. I am ashamed. What have I done? For this time will I take my leave, my lord. You leave, my lady. Leave. And you take your leave tomorrow morning. Oh, uh, pray you content you. What offends you, lady? Sir, my own company. You cannot shun yourself. Let me go and try. I have a kind of self resides with you, but an unkind self. But itself will lead to be another school. I would be gone. Where is my wit? I know not what I speak. Well know they what they speak that speak so wisely. Go to a bargain made. Seal it. Seal it. <laughs> I'll be a witness. Here, I'll take your hand and give you my cousin's hand. Now, if any of you ever prove false to one another, 
because I have gone to such pains to bring you together, let all goers between be known to the ends of the earth by my name. Call them pandas. Call all constant men troiluses and all <laughs> false women crescents. And all goers between pandas. Say amen. 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 <laughs> Whereupon I will provide you bed and chamber. And because the bed will not speak of your pretty encounters, press it to death. Away! And Cupid grant all tongue-tied maidens here bed, chamber, and thunder. You provide whiskey. Gladiotes, prostasia eres, eres nikiporos. Gladiotes, prostasia eres, eres nikiporos. Gladiotes, prostasia eres, eres nikiporos. Gladiotes, prostasia eres. which make demand. You have a Trojan prisoner called Antenor yesterday took. Troy holds him very dear. Oft have you, often, have you thanks therefore desired my crescent and right great exchange, whom Troy hath still denied. But this Antenor I know is such a rest in their affairs that their negotiations all must slack, wanting his manage. They would almost give us a prince of blood, a son of Priam in change of him. Let him be sent, great princes, and he shall buy my daughter, and her presence shall quite strike off all service I have done in most accepted pain. Let Diomedes bear him, and bring us Cressida hither. Calchas shall have what she requests of us. Good Diomed, furnish you fairly for this interchange. With all bring word, if Hector will tomorrow. Be answered in his challenge. Ajax is ready. <laughs> this shall I undertake. It is a burden which I am proud to bear. Achilles stands in the entrance of his tent. Please it our great general to pass strangely by him, as if forgot, and princes all, bear negligent and loose regard upon him. I will come last. Tis like you'll question me why such unplossive eyes are bent on him. We'll execute your purpose and put on a form of strangeness as we pass along. So do each lord, and either greet him not or else disdainfully, which shall shake him more than if not looked on. I will lead the way. What? Comes the general to speak with me? You know my mind. I'll fight no more against Troy. What says it, Kitty? Will he art with us? Will you, my lord, art with the general? No. Nothing, my lord. The better. Good day. Good day. Come on, Pascal. Good morrow, Ajax. Huh? Good morrow. <laughs> and good 
next day too. <laughs> what means these fellows? No, they not Achilles. They pass by strangely. Well, they were used to bend to send their smiles before them to Achilles, to come as humbly as they used to greet the holy altar. What am I poor of late? Tis certain greatness once fallen out with fortune must fall out with men too. Tis not so with me. Fortune and I are friends. I do at ample point enjoy all that I did possess save these men's looks. Who do me thinks find something not worth in me such rich beholding as they have often given? There's Ulysses. I'll interrupt his reading. How now, Ulysses? Now, great Thetis' son. They pass by me as misers do by beggars. Neither gave to me good word or look. What are my deeds so soon forgot? Time hath, my lord, a wallet <laughs> at his back. Wherein he pays alms for oblivion. These scraps are good deeds past, which are forgot as soon as they are done. <coughs> Perseverance, dear my lord, keeps honor bright. To have done is to keep quite out of fashion, like a rusty mail in monumental mockery. The present eye praises the present object, so marvel not thou great and complete man that all the Greeks now begin to worship Ajax, since the thing in motion sooner catches the eye than what stirs not. The cry once went to thee, and yet it may again, and yet it still might, if thou wast not entomb thyself alive and case thy reputation in thy tent. Of my privacy I have strong reasons. Yet against your privacy, the reasons are more potent and heroical. Tis known, Achilles, that you are in love with one of Priam's daughters. <laughs> known. Is it a wonder? All the commerce you have had with Troy is better as ours, as yours, my lord, and better it would trick Achilles to throw down Hector and Polyphena. But how it must grieve young Pyrrhus now at home, when fame in our island sounds her trump, and all the Greekish girls do tripping sing. Great Hector's sister did Achilles win. But our brave Ajax did <coughs> boldly beat down him. Farewell, my lord. I, as your friend, speak. The fool slips o'er the ice that you should break. To this effect, Achilles, have I moved you? They think <coughs> my little stomach to the war and, and your great love to me restrains you thus. Sweet, rouse yourself and... The weak wanton Cupid shall from your neck unloose his amorous fold, and like a dewdrop from the lion's mane be shook to air. Shall Ajax fight with Hector? Aye, and perhaps receive much honor by him. My reputation is at stake. My <clears throat> fame is shrewdly gored. Go call Thersites hither, sweet Patroclus. I'll send her to Ajax, and desire the fool to invite the Trojan commander to see us here and all. A woman's longing and appetite that I am sick with all to see great Hector in peace and peace. Talk with him and hold his hand to his full of view. The labor saved. A wonder. What? Ajax stalks up and down like a peacock, astride in a stand, ruminates like an hostess that hath no arithmetic but her brain to set down her reckoning. The man's undone forever. I said, good morrow, Ajax. And he replies, uh, thanks, Agamemnon. <laughs> what, what think you of this man who takes me for the general? <laughs> well, thou shalt be my ambassador to him, Thesides. Who, I? <laughs> he speaks to nobody. I, he professes not speaking. Uh, speaking is for... Is for beggars. Uh, he wears his tongue in his arms. Oh. I will put on his presence. I have Patroclus make demands of me. You shall see the pageant of Ajax. To her, Patroclus, tell her that I humbly desire the valiant Ajax to invite the most valorous Hector to come unarmed to our tent, and 
to procure safe conduct of the six or seven times honored Captain General of the Grecian Army, Agamemnon, etc. Do this. Jove, bless great Ajax. <coughs> Whom? <laughs> I come from the worthy Achilles. <laughs> Who most humbly desires you to invite Hector to his tent? Whom? <laughs> and to procure safe conduct from Agamemnon? Agamemnon? I, my lord. <laughs> what say you to it? God be with you with all my heart. <laughs> Your answer, sir. If tomorrow be a fair day, by 11 o'clock it will go one way or the other. <laughs> Your answer, sir. Bear you all well with all my heart. <laughs> Come, he's not of this tune, is he? No, but he is out of tune thus. <laughs> but music will be in him when Hector knocks out his brains. I know not, but I am sure none. Come, thou shalt bear a letter to him straight. Let me bear another to his horse, for that is the more capable creature. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is troubled like a fountain stirred, and I myself cannot see the bottom of it. Would that the fountain of your mind were clear again, that I could water an ass at it. I'd rather be a tick and a sheep than a valiant ignorance. <laughs> Nor less, nor more. 
but he is he the heavier for a whore. You are too bitter to your countrywoman. She's bitter to her country. Hear me, Paris. For every false drop in her body veins, a Grecian's life hath sunk. For every scruple of her contaminated carrying weight, a Trojan hath been slain. Since she could speak, she hath not given so many good words breath as her Greeks and Trojans suffer death. Fair Diomed, you do as Chapman do. Dispraise the thing you desire to buy. Here lies our way. Dear, trouble not yourself. The morn is cold. And sweet, my lord, I'll call mine uncle down. He shall unbolt the gates. Trouble him not. To bed, to bed. Tomorrow, then. I prithee now. To bed. Are you a weary of me? O oh, Cressida, but that the weary day waked by the lark hath roused the ribald crows. And dreaming night will hide our joys no longer. I would not prove thee. Night has been too brief. To shrew the witch. With venomous white she stays as tediously as hell, but flies the grasps of love with wings more momentary swift than thought. You will catch cold and curse me. What? The door's open. Hark, there's one up. It is your uncle. Oh, a pestilence on him. Now will he be mocking. Oh, now? Oh, now? <laughs> How goes, maidenheads? Here, you, maid. Where's my cousin Crescent? Go hang yourself, you naughty, mocking uncle. You bring me to do, and then you flout me, too. To do what? To do what? <laughs> Better say what. <laughs> what have I brought you here to do? Oh, come, come, to screw your heart. You'll ne'er be good, nor suffer others. <laughs> Alas, poor Red. Have you not slept the night? <laughs> Would he not, that naughty man, let it sleep? Oh, a bugbear take him. <laughs> Did not I tell you? He's at a door. Good uncle, go and see. My lord, come you again into my chamber. Swear to God, as if I meant naughty. Oh, I must take a knock. Pray you come in. I would not for half Troy have you seen here. Ah, uh, who's there? What's the matter? Good morrow, Lord, good morrow. Uh, my Lord Aeneas, uh, what news with you, sir? Is thy Prince Troilus here? Here? Uh, what would he do here? Come uh, now, my Lord, he is here. Do not deny it. It doth import him much to speak with me. Oh, is he here? Say you, I don't know. It's just, just more than I know. Uh, I'll be sworn. Uh, for my part, I came in late. Well, why should he be here? Come, uh, come, you'll do him wrong. Are you aware? You'll be so true to him to be possible to him. Oh, no, what's the matter? My lord, I scarce had the leisure to salute you. My manners are so rash. There is at hand your brother, and the Grecian diamond, and Antonor will deliver to us, and for him forthwith ere the first sacrifice. Within the hour, we must give up to Diamond's hand Lady Crescent. Is it so concluded? By Priam in the general state of Troy, there at hand and ready to effect it. How oh, my achievements mock me! I will go meet them. And my lord Aeneas, we met by chance. You did not find me here. Good, good, my lord. The secrets of nature have not more gift in taciturnity. It is possible. No sooner got than lost. Oh, the devil take that an hour. The young prince will go mad. I'll beg upon that an hour. I wish it have broke his nose. How now? What's the matter? Who is here? Not now. Not now. Oh, I saw you so profoundly. Where's my lord? Oh, were I as deep under the earth as I am above. Gods, what's the matter? Why the... Oh, I wish I'd never been born. I, I knew that would be the death of him. Oh, gentlemen, oh, 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 oh take upon that an hour. Good uncle, I, I beseech you on my knees. Beseech you, what's the matter? Thou must be gone, wench. Thou must be gone. 
Thou art changed for Antonour. Uh, thy must to thy mother, thou, thou must be gone from Croylus. Oh, he, 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 he'll be the death of him, it will be his bane, he cannot bear it. You mortal gods, I, I will not go. Thou must. I will not, uncle. I have forgot my mother. I, I know no touch of blood sanguinity, no kin, no blood, no love, no soul so near me as this presence. Ye gods divine, make Crescent's name the very crown of falsehood if ever she leave Troilus. Time, force, and death do to this body what extremes you can. Tear my bright hair, scratch my brain streak. Crack my clear voice with sobs and break my heart with sounding Troilus. I will not go from Troy. Be moderate. Be moderate. Oh, I tell you, me in moderation. The grief is fine, full, perfect that I taste, and my elective and a sense as strong as that which causeth it. How should I moderate it? Here, here it comes. Go, <laughs> oh, sweet ducks. Troilus. Troilus. Fine spectacle this is. Let me embrace too. Oh heart, oh heart, as the goodly saying goes, oh heavy heart, why sighest thou without breaking? Uh, there's no truer rhyme now. How oh, now, huh, lambs? Cressida, I love thee with so strained a purity that the blessed gods is angry with my fancy. Take thee from me. Have the gods and me. Ay, 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 you play the case. Is it true that I must go from Troy? A hateful truth. From Troy and Troilus. Is it possible? My lord is the lady ready? Hark, you are called anon. Bid them have patience, she shall come anon. Where are my tears? Did I send to the Grecians? No remedy. A woeful crescent looks the very Greeks. When shall we see again? My love, be thou but true of heart. How now, what wicked deem is this? Nay, we must use expostulation kindly, for it is parting from us. I speak not, be thou true, as fearing thee, for I will throw my glove to death itself, that there's no maculation in thy heart. But be thou true, say I, to fashion in my sequent protestation. Be thou true, and I will see thee. You should be exposed, my lord, to dangers as infinite as eminent. But I'll be true. And I'll grow friend with danger. Wear this glove. Charm. Shall I see you? I will corrupt the Grecian sentinels to give thee nightly visitation. But yet be true. Heavens, be true again. And hear it while I speak it, love. The Grecian youths are full of quality. They're loving, well composed with gifts of nature, flowing and swelling o'er with arts and exercise. Alas, a kind of godly jealousy. I beseech you, call it virtuous, and makes me a fear. Oh, haven't you let me not! Die I a villain, then! In this I do not call your faith in question so mainly as my merit. I cannot sing, nor heal the high lavolt, nor sweeten talk, nor play at subtle games. Fair virtues all to which the Grecians are most prompt and pregnant. But I can tell that in each of these there lurks a still and dumb discourse of devil that tempts most cunningly. But be not tempted! Do you think I will? No. But something may be done that we will not. And sometimes we are devils to ourselves when we when we will tempt the frailty of our powers, presuming on their changeful potency. Nay, good my lord! Come, kiss, and let us part. Brother Troilus! Good brother, come you hither, and bring Aeneas and the Grecian with you. My lord! Will you be true? Who I? Alas, it is my vice, my fault. The moral of my wit is plain and true. There's all the reach of it. Welcome, Sir Diomed. Here is the lady which for Antenor we deliver you. At the port, Lord, I'll give it to thy hand. And by the way, possess thee what she is. Entreat her fair, and by my soul, fair Greek, if e'er thou stand at mercy of my sword, Name Cressida, and thy life shall be as safe as Priam is an Ilion. Fair Lady Cressid, so please you save the thanks this prince expects. The luster in your eye and heaven in your cheek plead your fair usage, and to Diomed you shall be mistress and command him wholly. Grecian, 
Thou dost not use me courteously to shame the zeal of my petition to thee in praising her. I tell thee, Lord of Greece, she is as far high soaring o'er thy praises as thou unworthy to be called her servant. I charge thee, use her well even for my charge. For by the dreadful Pluto, if thou dost not, though the great bulk Achilles be thy guard, I'll cut thy throat. Oh, be not moved. Let me be privileged by my place and message to be a speaker free. When I am hence, I'll answer to my lot. And know you, Lord, I'll nothing do on charge. To her own worth she shall be prized. But that you say be it so? <laughs> I'll speak it in my spirit and honor. No. Come to the port. Lady, give me your hand. And as we walk, to ourselves bend we our needful talk. Hark, Hector's trumpet. What a waste this morning has been. The prince must think me tardy and remiss. That sword to ride before him to the field. It is Troilus's fault. Come, come to field with him. Let us make ready straight. The glory of Troy doth lie this day in his fair worth and single chivalry. Here art thou in appointment fresh and fair, anticipating time with starting courage. Give with thy trumpet a loud note to Troy, thou dreadful Ajax, that the appalled air may pierce the head of the great combatant and hail him hither. Is not young Diomed with Calchas' daughter? Tis he, I ken the nature of his gait. Cressid? Is this the Lady Cressid? Even she. Most dearly welcome to the Greek sweet lady. <laughs> Our general does salute you with a kiss. The kindness is but particular. It were better she were kissed in general. In very courtly counsel, I'll begin. <laughs> so much for Nestor. I'll take the winter from your lips, lady. Achilles bids you welcome. A pass on his kiss. This fine age has kissed. May I, sweet lady, beg a kiss from you? You may. I do desire it. Why beg then? Well then, for Venus' sake, give me a kiss when Helen is a maid again. I am your debtor. Claim when she is due. Never! Tis my day. Then a kiss from you. Lady, a word. I'll take you to your mother. No one of good sense. <laughs> Yonder comes the troop! Hail all you state of Greece. What shall be done to him that victory commands? Or do you purpose a victory shall be known? Hector made ask. Which way would Hector have it? <laughs> he cares not. He'll obey conditions. He's done like Hector, but more securely done. A little more proudly and a great deal misprising than I'd oppose. If not Achilles, sir, what is your name? If not Achilles, nothing. Here is Sir Diomed. Go, gentle knight. Stand with our Ajax as you and Lord Aeneas consent upon the order of their fight. So be it either to the utmost or else of breath the combatants being kin have stints their strife before their strokes begin. What Trojan is that same that looks so heavy? The youngest son of Priam, a true knight, not yet mature, yet matchless, sure and firm of word, as manly as Hector, but more dangerous. For Hector, in his blaze of wrath, thus subscribed to tender objects, where he, in his heat of action, is more vindicative than jealous love. They called him Troilus, and upon him erect a second hope, as fairly built as Hector. Thus says Aeneas, one who knows the youth even to his inches, and with private soul did thus translate him to me. Ooh, <laughs> Yes. 
no more. Enough, princes. So please you. I am not warm yet. Let us fight again. So Hector pleases. Thou oh, art, great lord, my father's sister's son. A cousin German's great prime seed. The obligation of our blood forbids a gory emulation twixt us twain. Let me embrace thee, Ajax. For him that thunders, thou hast lusty arms. Hector would have them fall upon him thus. Cousin, all honor to thee. I thank thee, Hector. You are too gentle and too free a man. I came to kill thee, cousin. And bear hence a great addition, earn the night death. There is a uh, expectance here on both sides. What further you shall do? We'll answer it. The issue is embracement. Ajax, farewell. My might and trees find success to sell the half the chance. I would invite my famous cousin to our Grecian tent. Tis Agamemnon's wish, and Achilles not long wished to see an arm the great Hector. But for Achilles, mine own searching eyes will find him by his large and portly size. <laughs> <laughs> Give me thy hand, my cousin. I'll go eat with thee and see your knights. Great Agamemnon comes to meet us here. Worthy of arms, as welcome as to one that would be rid of such an enemy. From heart to very heart. Great Hector, welcome! <laughs> I thank thee, most imperious Agamemnon. My well-famed lord of Troy, no less to you. I wonder now how yon city stands. What do we have here? Her base, pillar for us. I know your favor, lord Ulysses, well. Ah, sir, there's many a Greek and Trojan dead since first I saw yourself in time at Canelion on your Greekish embassy. <laughs> Sir, I foretold you then what would ensue, and my prophecy is but half his journey yet, for yon walls that currently front your town, and yon towers whose wanton tops do bust the clouds must kiss their own feet. <laughs> I must not believe thee. There they stand yet, and modestly I think, the fall of every Phrygian stone will cost a drop of Grecian blood. The end crowns all. That old calm and arbitrator time will one day end it. <laughs> to him we leave it. Most gentle and valiant Hector, <coughs> welcome. And after the general, I beseech you, Ness, to feast with me and see me in my tent. I must forestall thee, Lord Ulysses, thou. Now, Hector, even as I take thee a full of you, and I quoted thee joint by joint. Is this Achilles? I am Achilles. Stand fair, I pray thee, let me look on thee. Behold thy fill. They had done already. <laughs> Thou art too brief. I will view thee a second time as I would buy thee and quote thee limb by limb. Oh, like a book of sport, thou read me o'er. But there's more in me than thou understandst. Why dost thou so oppress me with thine eye? Oh, tell me, you heavens, on which part of his body shall I destroy him? Whether there, or there, or there? And I may give the local wound a name and make distinct the very breach where great Hector's spirit flew. Answer me, heavens! It would discredit the blessed god called man to answer such a question. Stand again. Thinkst thou to catch my life so pleasantly as to predominate a nice conjecture where thou wilt hit me dead? I tell thee, yea. Wert thou an oracle to tell me so, I not believe thee. Henceforth, God thee well, for I'll not kill thee there nor there. Nor there. <laughs> but by the force that Scythe Mars's helm, I'll kill thee everywhere, yea, or endure. The wisest Grecians pardon me this prey. His insolence draws folly from my lips. But I'll endeavor deeds to match these words. May I never uh, talk! Chase thee not, cousin. And you, Achilles, let these threats alone till accident or purpose bring you to it. I pray thee, let us see thee in the field. Thou so entice me, Hector. I will meet thee tomorrow. Fell as death. Night, all friends. Thy hand upon that match. First, all you peers of Greece, go to my tent. There in the full convive we. Let the trumpets blow, that this great soldier may his welcome know. Lord Ulysses, tell me, I beseech you, 
In what place of the field doth Calchas keep? In her tent, most princely Troilus. Their diamond doth feast with her tonight. Another looks on heavens, nor earth, but gives all gaze and bent amorous view on the fair crescent. So shall I be bound to you so much. After we part from Agamemnon's tent to bring me thither? Sir, you shall command me, as gentle tell me. Why was this Cressida in Troy this evening? Hath she no lover that wails her absence? Will you walk on, my lord? Tonight I'll heat his blood with Grecian wine, which with my scimitar I'll cool tomorrow. Patroclus, let us feast him to the height. Here comes Thersites. <laughs> How now, thou core of envy, thou crusty batch of nature? What's the news? Why, thy idol of idiot worshippers? Here's a letter for thee. From whence, fragment? Why, thy full dish of fool from Troy. <laughs> Who keeps the tent now? I prithee, boy, keep silent. I profit not from thy talk. Tis thought thou art Achilles' male varlet. Male varlet, you rogue! Uh, what's that? <laughs> His masculine whore! For the rotten diseases of the South, the, 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 the guts gripping, ruptures, lethargies, cold palsies, raw eyes, dirt rotten livers, her wheezing lungs, her bladders full of imposthume. Uh, sciaticus, incurable bone ache, and, and the rival fee simple of the tenor. Take a take again such preposterous discoveries. Why, oh, thou <laughs> damnable box of envy, thou, what meanest thou to curse thus? <laughs> my sweet Patrick, I am quite thwarted in my duties in tomorrow's battle. It's a letter from Queen Hecuba, a token from her daughter, my fair love, both taxing me, engaging me to keep an oath that I have sworn. I shall not break it. This night in feasting must all be spent. Welcome, great Hector. Welcome, princes all. So now, fair prince of Troy, I bid good night. Ajax commands the gods, and tend on you, great Hector. I thank thee, and good night to the Greek general. Good night and welcome, both at once to those that go or tarry. Good night. Old Nestor tarries, and you too, Diamond. Keep Hector a company an hour or two. I cannot, lord. I have important business, the tide whereof is now. Good night, great Hector. Follow his torch. He goes to Calchas's tent. I will keep you company. Sweet sir, you honor me. And so, good night. Come, enter my tent. That same diamond, sir. Filthy rogue, a most unjust name. I would no more trust him, uh, trust a, a snake when it hisses than, than him when he leers. It is said he keeps a Trojan drab a, a, and uses the traitor Calchas's tent. <laughs> All after. Uh, wars and lettery. All incontinent varlets. What? Are you up here? Ho! Oh. Stand where his torch will not see us. Christy comes forth to him. How now, my child? Now, my sweet guardian. He is so familiar. Will you remember? Remember? Yes. Nay, but do then. Let your mind be coupled with your words. What should she remember? List. Sweet honey Greek, tempt me no more to folly. Ruggery. Nay, that's... Uh, in faith, I cannot. What would you have me do? What did you swear you would bestow on me? I pray thee do not hold me to mine oath. Bid me do anything but that. Sweet Greek. Good night. Diamond! No, 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 no. Good night. I'll be your fool no more. Hark! A word in your ear. You are moved, Prince. Let us depart, I pray you. I behold for you. Nay, good, my lord. You flow to great distractions. Come. 
pray thee, stay. You have not patience. Come. I pray thee, stay. I will not speak a word. Nay, but you pardon anger. Guardian. Wait, who are you? <laughs> Adieu. You palter. In faith, I do not. Come hither once again. You shake, my lord, at something. Will you not come? You will break out. She strokes his cheek. Come, come. I pray thee, stay. By hell and all hell's torments, I will not speak a word. How the devil luxury with his fat rump and his potato finger tickles these together. Fry, luxury fry. <laughs> but will you then? Faith, I will. Law, never trust me else. Give me some token for the surety of it. I'd keep this glove. Oh, beauty, where is thy faith? My lord. <coughs> Look upon that glove, behold it well. He loved me. A false wench, give it me again. Whose was it? It is no matter, now I have it again. I will not meet with you tomorrow night. I pray thee, Diamond, visit me no more. I shall have it. What this? Aye, that. Oh, pretty, pretty pledge, nay! They do not snatch it from me. He that takes that shall take my heart with all. I had your heart before, this follows it. Oh, you shall not have it, I am at faith, you shall not. I'll give you something else. I shall have this. Whose was it? It is no matter. Come, tell me whose it was. Twas one that loved me better than you will. Now you have it, take it. Tomorrow will I wear it. <laughs> and agree, the spirit that dares not challenge it. Wert thou the devil and worst on thy horn, it should be challenged. Whose was it? <laughs> Farewell. Thou shalt never mock Diomed again. You shall not go. One cannot speak a word, but it straight starts you. I do not like this fooling. What? Shall I come? The hour? In Trove, I shall be plagued. It is. Why stay we then? To make a recordation to my soul of every syllable that here was spoke. Was Crescent here? I cannot conjure, Trojan. She was not, surely. Most sure she was. Why, my negation hath no taste of madness. Nor mine. Crescent was here, but now. Let it not be believed for womanhood. This she... No, this is Diamond's Cressida. If beauty of a soul, this is not she. If souls guide vows, if vows be sanctimony, if sanctimony be the God's delight, if there be rule and unity itself, this was not she. May worthy Charles be half affected by that with which his passion does express? I Greek, and that shall be divulged in letters as red as Mars, his heart inflamed with Venus. Never did young men fancy with so passionate a heart. Hark you, Greek, as much as I do crescent love, so much by weight hate I her diamond. That glove is mine that he'll wear in his hand. Oh, crescent! Oh, false crescent! False, false, false! Let all untrue stand by thy stained name and they'll seem glorious. Oh, contain! 
restrain yourself. Your, ear, your cries do bring ears hither. I have been seeking you this hour, my lord. Hector by this is arming him in Troy. Ajax your guard stays to conduct ye home. Thank you, Prince. My good lord, adieu. Farewell, revolted fair. Diomed, stand fast. I'll take you to the gate. that I could meet that rogue diamond. I would croak like a raven. I would bold. I would bold. Uh, Ajax would pay me anything for the intelligence of that whore. <laughs> a parrot would do no more for an almond than he would for that commodious grab. Lechery, lechery. Still wars and lechery. <laughs> Nothing else holds a fashion. Burning devil, take him. When was my lord so much ungently tempered to stop his ears against admonishment? Unarm, unarm, and do not fight today. Be gone. By all the everlasting gods, I'll go. My dreams will sure prove ominous to this day. No more, I say. Where is my brother Hector? Here, sister, armed and bloody and intent, consort with me in loud and dear petition, pursue him on these, for I have dreamed of bloody turbulence, and this whole night hath nothing been but shapes and forms of slaughter. That is true. Be gone! The gods have heard me swear. The gods are deaf to hot and peevish vows. They're polluted offerings, more abhorred than spotted livers in the sacrifice. On arm, sweet Hector. Hold you still, I say. Mine honor keeps the weather off my fate. Like every man holds dear, but the brave man holds honor far more precious dear than life. How now, young man? Ain't thou to fight today? Cassandra, call my father to persuade. No faith, young Troilus. Doth thy harness you. I am today in the vein of chivalry. Let grow thy sinews till thy knocks be strong, and tempt not yet. The brushes of the war. Unarm thee, go, and doubt thou not, brave boy. I'll stand today for thee and me and Troy. Brother, you have a vice of mercy in you, which better fits a lion than a man. What vice is that, good Troy? Let's chide me for it. Even in the even when the crept of Grecian falls, even in the fan and wind of your fair sword, you bid them rise and live. Which is fair play. Fool's play by heaven, Hector. How now, how now? For the love of all the gods, let's leave a hermit pity with our mothers. And when we have our armors buckled on, let venom vengeance ride upon our swords. Spur them to rueful work, rain them from roof. Bye, savage. Bye. Hector, then tis wars. Troilus, I will not have thee fight today. Who should withhold me? Not Priam and Hecuba on knees, their eyes o'er galled with their cores of tears. Not you, my brother, with your true sword drawn, opposed to hinder me, should stop my way. Lay hold upon him, Priam. Hold him fast. Fall all together. Come, Hector. Come. Go back. Thy wife hath dreamed. Thy mother hath had visions. Cassandra doth foresee, and I myself. And like a prophet, suddenly and rapt to tell thee that this day is ominous. Therefore, come back. Aeneas is a field, and I do stand engaged to many Greeks, even in the faith of valor, to appear this morning to them. Aye, but thou shalt not go. I must not break my faith. You know me dutiful. Therefore, dear sir, let me not shame respect, but give me leave by your to take this course by your consent and voice, which you do here forbid me, royal prior. Priam, yield not to him. Do not, dear father. Andromache, I am offended with you. Upon the love you bear me, get you win. Farewell. 
thy eye turns pale. Look how thy wounds do bleed at many vents. Hark how Troy roars! How Hecuba cries out, how poor Andromaca shrills her dollars forth! Behold distraction, frenzy, and amazement, like witless antics one another meet, and all cry, Hector! Hector's dead! <gasps> Hector! This foolish, dreaming, superstitious girl makes all these bodements. Away! Away! Farewell! Get soft, Hector, and take my leave. Thou dost thyself and all our Troy deceive. You are long, my liege, at her exclaim. Go in, cheer the town. We'll forth and fight do deeds worth praise. And tell you them at night. Farewell, the gods of safety be <laughs> Hark, they are at it. Proud Diomed, believe, I come to lose my arm or win my glove. <coughs> Do you hear, my lord? <coughs> Do you hear? What news? Uh, a letter from my young poor girl. Let me read. <coughs> oh, no. I'm worsened, you see. <coughs> and rascally to sin. That's what troubles me. Well, that and the foolish fortunes of this girl. Uh, one thing and another. Well, I'll be leaving you soon. I get such a room in my eye, such an ache in my bones, and if you think on it, you was a uh, cursed. What says she there? Words, words, mere words, no matter from the heart. The effect does operate another way. Go win, to win, their turn and change together. My love with words and errors still she feeds, but edifies another with her deeds. Now they are clapper clawing one another. I'll go look after. That dissembling abominable varlet diamonds got that same scurvy doting, foolish, young knave of Troy's glove there on his hand. I would fain see the meat that that, <laughs> that young Trojan ass that loves the whore there might send the Greekish whoremasterly <laughs> villain <laughs> back to the dissembling, luxurious drab. <laughs> oh, here comes the glove and the other. <laughs> Why not? Should thou take the river Styx, I would swim after. <laughs> thou dost miscall retire. I do not fly, but advantageous care withdrew me from the odds of multitude. <laughs> Have at thee! Oh, thy ho, Grayson! <laughs> now for thy ho, Trojan! <laughs> now the glove! What art thou, Greek? Art thou abroad in honor? No, no, I'm a rascal, a filthy rogue, a scurvy railing knave. I believe thee. Live. God's a mercy that thou wouldst believe me, for the plague break thy neck for frightening me. Most 
putrefied corpse, so fair without. Thy goodly armor thus hath cost thy life. Kill, he's angry. Where is Hector? Well, oh, none but Hector. Hector! Oh, courage! Courage, princes! The great Achilles is arming, cursing, weeping, vowing revenge. Patroclus' wounds has roused his drowsy blood. <laughs> Troilus, thou coward! Troilus, show thy head! I would correct him. O oh, traitor Diomed, turn thy false face, thou traitor, and pay thy life thou owest me. <laughs> I'll stand with him alone. Stand, Diomed. He is my prize. I will not look upon. Come, both you cogging Greeks. Have at you both. <laughs> Sword, thou hast thy fill of blood and death. Look, Hector, how the sun begins to set, and how ugly night comes breathing at its heels. And even in the ugly and veil of the night, to close the day up, Hector's <coughs> life is done. I am unarmed. Remove this vantage, Greek. So, great Ilion, fall thou next. Oh, oh. <coughs> thou, Troy, sit you down. For here lies thy heart, thy sinews, and thy bone. On, Grecians, cry you all amen, for Achilles hath the great Hector slain. Fuck. A retirement upon our Grecian part. The Trojan trumpets sound alike, my lord. Dragon winged night overspreads the earth, and stickler like the army separates. My half sup sword that frankly would have fed pleased with this dainty fate. Let's go to bed.
God forbid! Frown on you heavens, affect your rage with speed. Sit gods upon your thrones and smile at Troy. I say it once, let your brief plagues be mercy, and linger not our short destructions on. Hector is dead. Who shall tell Priam so, or Hecuba? Let him that will a screech owl eye there be called, go into Troy and say there, Hector's dead. There is a word will Priam turn to stone, make Naomi's of the maids and wives, cold statues of the youth, and in a word, scare Troy out of itself. There is no more to say. You vile, abominable tents, thus proudly pied up on our Phrygian plains. Let Titan rise as early as he dare. I'll throw it through you! And now, Achilles, no space of earth shall sunder our two hates. I'll haunt thee like a wicked conscience still that moldeth goblins swift as frenzy's thoughts. Strike a free march to Troy! With comfort go. Hope or revenge shall hide our inward woe. But hear you, hear you! Hence, broker lackey, ignominy and shame pursue thy life, and live I with thy name. This is the poor agent despised. <laughs> All you tempters, who traitors, you bods, who earnestly set a work and are ill recompensed. Uh, why are our endeavors so loved and yet our performance so low? What instance for it? What uh, what careers for it? Ah, let me see. <laughs> Full merrily doth the humblebee sing, till he hath lost his honey and his sting. And once subdued in armored tail, sweet honey and sweet notes together fail. <laughs> no good traitors of the flesh, put that in your painted cloth. And all ye who be here of Pander's Hall, your eyes, Half out, weep at Pander's fall. <laughs> and if you cannot weep, think of a grove. <laughs> but not for me, but for your aching bones. Oh, brethren and sisters of the whole door trade, some two weeks hence my will shall here be made. It should be now, but my fear is this, is that some gall goose of Winchester will hiss. <laughs> Till then I'll sweat and seek my eases, and at that time bequeath you my diseases. Yeah. <laughs>